What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine. I am back. And from the Daily Beast, New York Times executive gets reamed by staff over LGBTQ slack remark. This never ends. The New York Times, one of the most extremely biased news outlets on the entire planet, is now getting reamed by their even more extreme employees because these people will always eat their own. It never fails. A Times HR exec was the subject of a staff pile-on after encouraging LGBTQ staffers to raise workplace concerns only via HR-approved outlets. So they were telling you the proper way to raise your concerns about discrimination going on at your already incredibly woke outlet and you were mad about that I just don't understand these people will always I mean every single time they get to play the victim they get to pretend that everybody is against them right I mean these are the same people who threatened to strike if the company wanted them back in the office right so we should be able to write our little clickbait weirdo biased articles from the crib and if you want us to go back to the house then that's wrong if you don't I mean it just is this even real? How did we get here? These are actual adults complaining about their job, their cushy job that they do from probably a condo on the top floor of a Manhattan building. It's insanity. The New York Times executive stepped in it last week when she seemed to encourage a slack room full of LGBTQ staffers not to raise workplace concerns in the channel dedicated to raising employee concerns. And of course, the Daily Beast is now smearing the times and they've done this before right where the beast will claim that the times is biased and and they cover their the way they cover the transformer issue i mean it just never ends but because nobody has ever put their foot down and just told these people to stop it has become this vicious cycle and i mean they're just circling the drain non-stop it continues I wanted to share a note about discussing or reporting about your workplace experience to ensure everyone knows about our resources, wrote Natalia Villalobos, the Times Vice President of Inclusion, Strategy, and Execution in an April 3rd post to Times Out, the paper's LGBTQ-focused employee resources group. So a woman wrote in the Slack chat where they should put their concerns and they're mad about where she told them to put their concerns. What am I missing here? The HR exec directed employees to several HR approved methods of expressing concerns and ask and ask the company Slack channel a one-on-one -on -one with a manager or the ever helpful recourse of going directly to HR reps going forward. I want to encourage folks. Ugh, F O L X S. Are you kidding me? These people are on another planet. I want to encourage folks to raise concerns or issues via the places ab above rather than in this ERG. So they're complaining about where they are supposed to put their complaints about how they are being treated because they're LGBTQ at the New York Times, which is notoriously one of the wokest, as the kids say, outlets on the entire planet. This is this is through the roof. I mean, this is beyond comprehension. This is beyond parody. Suffice to say, the post rankled, rankled? I don't even know what that means. Staffers in the Slack channel, especially as the paper deals with continued fallout over its handling of internal and external criticisms of its trans coverage. Several times, employees directly replied to Villalobos to question what prompted her post timing and how her suggestion could make LGBTQ staffers feel unsafe. So if you, as a New York Times employee, an LGBT BBQ Times staffer employee, if you feel unsafe at the New York Times, then you need to crawl back inside your mother because you're not going to feel safe anywhere. This is insanity. I can't help but feel lately like I'm expected to just shut up and deal with the negativity because it make, might make some of my coworkers feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, you should. You should shut up and go back to your job that you're probably getting paid far too much money to do. I mean, this is ridiculous. It feels completely surreal and disrespectful to get corporate swag branded with a pride flag at the same time as we're being instructed to not publicly discuss our experiences as queer people. I mean, 
they just, they want everything. They want it all. They're coming for everything, right? This isn't about the right wing. This isn't about the conservatives. This isn't about Fox News. This is about the New York Times requesting that you put your complaints about living your life. I mean, everybody has a complaint about their job. That's not new. But they're complaining about where the HR executive, who is head of diversity, inclusion, whatever, a nonsensical title in itself, where and when they told them to put their... I'm, I'm actually ast I'm astonished by this. Uh, this is... it's This is a joke. This is... It, it's an... I, I'm speechless. This is an absolute joke that these people are working for one of the largest news outlets in the country, possibly in the world, and they're complaining about what the, where the HR executive told them to put their, their complaints, which they shouldn't even have. They should just go talk to a friend. Like, right, most people just go home or, or go out for drinks after, after work and say, oh, you know what, my boss did today, and they vent, and then they go back to work. But these people just want every single thing. If you don't capitulate to their every single need, desire, I mean, and you can follow along with it, right? You can play by their rules. And they'll just keep moving the goalposts. It's real whack-a-mole out there. So you can follow every single thing they say until one day they do a complete 180 and it's different from something they said two days ago and now you have to jump through that hoop. And if you don't, they're going to get angry and the cycle continues. Uh, I don't know what else to say except for this is absolute insanity. And obviously the New York Times is no better than Cage Liner. I mean, I guess... I'm sure people haven't been reading it in its hard copy form for many years now, outside of maybe a couple old people sitting in Washington Square Park. But that's the, you know, beside the point. And I digress as per usual. But thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe. And don't read the New York Times.